Member for Mason. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. On a day when the Premier and the Deputy Leader of the Opposition apologised to the children of the Fairbridge Farms in this place for the terrible abuse that they suffered, I rise to add my personal apology to these children, who are now adults, mm -hmm. and um, some reflections that may make a difference to the way we deal with some of those kinds of policies in the future. In 1997, as a young idealistic public servant in the Department of Immigration, I was tasked with writing the Commonwealth Government's response to the then West Australian Parliament's inquiry into the British Migrant Children's Scheme, which operated in that state. During the time I was preparing the response, I researched the topic in much detail, and it was appalling, horrifying reading. I became very familiar with the work of Margaret Humphreys, the social worker in England who worked with so many of the former British and Maltese child migrants to find the truth of their origins and to reconnect with families. There were so many terrible stories that touched so deeply that even as an adult when I went to Western Australia later on, I actually visited some of the homes there, Bindoon and Clontarf, because I needed to see the places where these atrocities occurred for some sort of closure. What struck me was the peaceful quiet of that campus with the beautiful grand buildings which had seen such horror. And to think of the tiny little hands, not much bigger than those of my then five-year-old son, which had helped to build them. During my investigations, I went to the legal area of my department to gain a legal opinion on the Immigration Guardianship of Children Act, which is the act whereby the Minister for Immigration delegated his guardianship to those children of those children to the many church and community organisations which took on these children in the name of caring for them. I wanted to know who was responsible for the oversight of these children, who was their guardian. I was prevented by senior departmental advisors from getting a legal opinion. They simply didn't want me to ask the question and nor would they let me forward that question to the Attorney General's department. There were fears of compensation claims and government liability which have all now come to pass, but sadly too late for many of those children. It was the time of the Stolen Generation Report and I saw the many correlations in the situation of those children who also, too late, but at last received an apology from the government. I want to ask now, given what we know about the need for clear monitoring and oversight of these most precious children, about what is going to happen to the many people with disabilities in our state who will move from government homes to those run by churches and community services and for-profit providers as early as July next year. Who will be responsible for them? Who will be their guardians? I know the Minister for Disabilities is hosting a briefing for MP soon, but that fundamental question of who will be the guardian is the most important he will have to provide an answer for. I understand that this government is trying to devolve itself from, from the disability service sector, moving the functions and responsibilities to the federal government and the private sector. I have serious, well-founded concerns based on my experiences and those of many, many people. But my experiences in government in particular, these concerns will not be addressed properly or in time. Who will advocate for these people if they suffer abuse or neglect? Their parents will be dead and perhaps their siblings too. It will be too late. Indeed, I was told recently that one of those group homes, so widely and loudly lauded by the minister, was taken out of the hands of a private not-for-profit provider in the last term of the Labor government by one of my predecessors, the Honourable Frank Terenzini. It was taken out of their hands over questionable care practices. And the questions come, who will be the provider of last resort once there are no government homes? Who will be the ones left to advocate? Most importantly, who will be the guardians? Who will take responsibility for these people? They are the most disadvantaged, the most vulnerable, and the least able to advocate for themselves. We need answers, and so do they, and they deserve them. Let's not have another tragedy in this place. I'd call the parliamentary secretary. Can I acknowledge um, the contribution by the member for Maitland and the service she has given this state and the important work she did caring for some of those most vulnerable in our community. The issues she raised are real and genuine and I will raise with the Minister immediately after this. I too would like to sincerely join you in working to make sure that those most at the margins in our community 
those without a voice, those without a guardian that cares for them or loves them, are protected. They don't fall through the cracks. Each and every one of us in this chamber should be standing up for that every day of the week. And on the occasion where we've acknowledged the horrible wrongs committed to those children that came here and went to the Fairbridge farm, I too think that we can never, ever let that happen again. Mm -hmm.